I was a part of a church community that was hyper legalistic. I don't know if you can be hyper legalistic, but they were to the point, you know, nobody hugged in the church. We all fist bumped um, because you didn't want to, you know, you wanted to guard your heart. If you were on the phone with people, you you made sure that you at least mentioned Jesus at some point in the conversation, because if you didn't, it was considered having an idle conversation. Um, and wow. so you met with God every single day. God forbid you get into a car and you don't give somebody the gospel. It was just very intense. And I thought that was Christianity um, until we uh, came to find out that our, our leadership were all being sexually immoral, using wow. scriptures to manipulate women into sexual practices and, and all the things. Oh. And so that kind of crushed me because it was like, we're all trying to obey God with all of these like precepts and laws that y'all gave us and y'all are living lawless. Like that's crazy. And so I had to kind of, I, w- I won't say deconstruct, but I had to just get back to the basics of what is grace. What is like, why was the Holy Spirit sent? What is justification? What does that all mean? What do God, do mm. God, do you love me even when I do nothing? And I think going through that process just kind of, I don't know, freed me a bit. So going through that process is for a lot of people, they walk away from God. They wake, walk away from the church. Yeah. I mean, you say that like it was kind of a Saturday, but that probably was pretty <laughs> dramatic. No, it was, it was traumatic. For sure. It was. Yeah. yeah. God was kind. I think I think he kept me. And so one of the ways he kept me is that I was super like uh, I just was cool on church for a minute. And I made it up in my mind that if I if I have my Bible, if I got the Holy Ghost and I got a couple friends that, uh, you know, hang out with me every now and again and talk about Jesus at Applebee's, I'll be straight. Like I don't necessarily I don't need to be a member of a local church to love the Lord. Um, and I had moved home back home to St. Louis and I was at Chipotle. I was probably 20. I, I, I went back home and I saw this guy and this other guy, this black guy and this white guy opening the Bible together. And I was like, huh, I should ask them what they're doing. And you know, that ain't even my personality. So that's how you know it's the Holy Ghost. And so <laughs> I went over and I was like, Hey, I see y'all reading the Bible together. Like, do y'all go to a church or something? And they were like, yeah, we're actually starting a church plan. Long story short. Um, I went to the church plant in that time, the pastor, the first time we met, he took me to Acts where uh, Jesus is talking to Paul. And he says, like, why are you persecuting me? And he's like, I'm not even persecuting you. And Jesus is like, if you persecute in the church, you persecute me. And the spirit wow. used that to convict me, but challenge me to see the church in the way that Jesus sees the church, which is that he's so identified with his bride that if I'm gonna love Jesus, I need to love his body. And so I think being planted back in a healthy body then helped me to process the true gospel. Wow. Wow. I mean, that right there, people are going to have to sit with that, rewind that, because, yeah, the conviction of it is is bigger than our desire, bigger than our Mm. hurt, bigger than Mm. the reality that this is hard. 